Hey guys, happy Thursday. Today is Thursday, May 16th, so we are on the 16th day of Celiac Awareness Month. My name is Tracy, otherwise known as Healthy Happy Momsy, and I am here to answer your questions, provide some information and some resources regarding celiac. As I said, um, it's Celiac Awareness Month, and so who am I and why am I on here talking about this information? Um, well, my name is Tracy. I am a former uh, pharmaceutical sales rep. I spent 17 years in pharmaceutical sales and then actually when my daughter and I were diagnosed with celiac in 2009, she and I, uh, I, I basically started on my journey of trying to understand celiac, trying to understand what was going on. There was a lot of overwhelm and two years ago I actually left corporate America. I left pharmaceutical sales in pursuit of being a work at home mom, got certified as a health and wellness coach and I work with people on getting healthier, um, whether that means working on losing body fat, improving their muscle, improving their performance in the gym. Um, a lot of it has to do with mindset. So I work with people who do have celiac and people who don't have celiac. The majority of people I work with do not have celiac, but because it is Celiac Awareness Month and because of the fact that I understand the overwhelm when, um, when you first get diagnosed, this is something that on my heart I wanted to be able to share with people and to be able to provide value. So I've been doing a lot of research and looking at um, what are the most common questions, most common issues that people have, whether they're first diagnosed with celiac or one of their loved ones is. So today's topic that we are going to be discussing is resources. And that to me, guys, like when I was first diagnosed and I was completely overwhelmed, my first thought was where do I go? Where do I find information that is valuable, that is helpful? As a former drug rep, I can say that uh, a lot of doctors get frustrated with when they have customer or their patients come in and their patients have been listening to, as they say, Dr. Google or Dr. Blogger because they get frustrated in general just talking about overall um, health conditions when they come in and, and cite something that they read on some blog, that kind of thing. Um, so the first thing that you need to understand is that you want your resources to be credible you also want them to be supportive. So you want to kind of keep a balance of that to, um, to keep into perspective. You know, sometimes we want to find answers and we want to just find the answers regardless of um, the credibility. And then if we go in and we try to talk to our doctor about those issues, but it's from a non-credible source, then the doctor gets really frustrated with the research that we can do on our own. So I did bring up that sometimes with celiac, one of the big frustrations though is that um, healthcare providers do not get as much education when it comes to celiac or even when it comes to nutrition because that's just not where they're spending a lot of their time. That's not where a lot of the CME is and, and they keep up to date with, um, with what's going on based on their CME. It just depends on your doctor and what their particular passion is and if you're going to a specialist. But it is important in between your doctor's visits and in general for you to take a big advocacy step and for you to own your own health because your doctor isn't going to go home with you. They're not going to monitor what you're doing and you're the one that needs to be able to live and provide for yourself on a daily basis. So how do you find those resources? Well, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some time. I know that when I was first diagnosed, like I said, this was 10 years ago in 2009, there was still a lot more stuff in print. There still is a ton of stuff in print. There's still a ton of resources available. Um, personally, when I started, I was in Eastern North Carolina. There was a magazine called Living Without. And, you know, what does that say? Hey, here's what you're living without. Um, so it was, it was very telling, but it was also um, kind of frustrating with, with the the title of that magazine. But um, it was very helpful because there were some different um, there were some different articles in there. There was a lot of information that helped me to understand why my daughter was going gluten-free because that was how our journey started was finding out she was intolerant to gluten. And so trying to understand what do I cook now? How do I substitute things? And I lived in rural North Carolina at the time where the resources were more limited than in I live on the outskirts of Greensboro now, and I have a lot more resources available. Number one, it's 10 years later. Number two, I'm in a more metropolitan area. So what types of resources do you get? How do you find this information? How do you find what's credible? Um, it's 2019. There's a ton of stuff on the web. There are a ton of bloggers. It's definitely a, um, a full mix of, of people. And, you know, people can just post whatever they want. So you do want to kind of look at that person's credentials. You want to uh, see, do they know what they're talking about? Is what they're saying making sense? And is it connecting with other people, um, you know, other experts in the area. So you're going to spend some time doing some research. Um, like I said, there are some great bloggers out there. Um, 
Gluten Dude is fantastic. When I first started, I think Gluten Free on a Shoestring was one of the bloggers that I found super helpful. Um, but it was also kind of overwhelmed because Gluten Free on a Shoestring, she was much further along on her journey than I am. And she had already gotten to the point where she realized that all this process stuff was going to cause some other issues. So she was teaching people how to um, how to deal with things on a lower budget, but lower budget means you spend more time prepping your food. It means you're not spending $7 on a box of cookies because they're marked gluten-free and there's like a third of the cookies in there as a regular box of cookies. Um, so she had already kind of gone through that journey, but I didn't know that. Um, I did, however, you know, over the last several years, I've seen tons of groups pop up on Facebook. Um, and I actually manage a group on Facebook called, called Positive Celiac and Gluten-Free Support. I started that group as a result of seeing that some people were frustrated because there are a lot of groups for people with celiac and with um, who live gluten-free lives. And there are people that are all along their different spectrum or their different journey as far as where they are and how much experience they have. And those that are new ask a lot of questions that some of the more experienced ones forget um, what it was like to be new. And so they kind of get intimidated. The newer people might get intimidated. And I saw a lot of them starting to sign off that I thought there was a, I saw a need for people who are more newly diagnosed um, to be able to have a resource and to be able to have an outlet to get information. There are also groups for people who have kids. Um, there's a ton of, of resources, like I said, out there. There are books in the library if you want to put your hands on things. There are definitely some, still some magazines out there. Um, and like I said, the bloggers, I do have a blog. My blog is enmegfree.com, the letter E, the letter N, me, gfree.com. And on there, I have reviews of different uh, restaurants that we've gone to, both locally as well as with traveling. When I was in pharmaceutical sales, I definitely did a lot of travel around the country. Um, and then also some basic tips for people who are going gluten-free on there, uh, as well as you know what we cook at home, stuff like that. So I have a mix of things on there to help with people. And then it's a very welcoming community. I ask people to please ask questions, um, post your thoughts, and share. And when you're in those groups, um, sorry, going back to the, the positive sea life and gluten free sport, when you're in other groups as well, it is important to pay attention to um, the tone of credibility, I guess is what I would say, as far as when people are sharing information, because there are some people that are very opinionated. And a great example that I see is a question where somebody says, hey, I've gone gluten free. I know that I'm definitely gluten free, that, that I've been following the, the gluten free program, but I'm still having issues. And this question comes up all the time. And then the first thing that I see is tons of people saying, you need to eliminate this from your diet. You need to eliminate that from your diet. You've got to, um, you can't have corn, you know, I, I can't have corn, so you should give up corn. Somebody else says, I, I can't have rice, you should give up rice. Somebody else then says, you need to go on the FODMAP diet. Um, you should go on the FODMAP diet. It helped me. Somebody else says, oh, I've noticed, um, you know, I, I can't do sugar. Somebody else says, I can't do caffeine. And then if you're the person that originally posted that question, and if you were to follow the directions of every single person on that thread, what they talked about was their individual issues. And at the end of the day, if you followed every single person's um, guidelines or, or you know their, whatever their suggestion is, there's pretty much like nothing left to eat on some of those. So I usually will suggest, hey, keep up with what you're eating and with what your symptoms are and put it into some sort of a symptom tracker where they can actually um, look at it. Either you're going to do it on your own with paper and pen, pencil, whatever, um, or there are some great apps where you can do it and the apps will actually look for those common ingredients, especially if it's one where you can scan the ingredient or scan the label because then it does have the ingredients already populated into the app. Um, so something like that can also help you where it'll look for what those common triggers are with your symptoms. But it does require that you're very very vigilant about tracking that. Um, so that's why I say be very cautious as to whose guidance you're following. Then there are other people in some of these groups where they will post and they're citing their resources. Um, I had some questions recently and I asked in one of the big groups and there was something that was super helpful. She was just putting the hyperlinks for the different resources where she was pulling the information and it was credible, um, credible data, credible sources that I was like, oh, thank you so much. Um, you know, so, so it's definitely important to pay attention to that. There are also tons of people on there with their agenda. 
I am very open and honest. Yes, I am tied in with a health and wellness company. And it's because I did my research on this health and wellness company before I decided to, um, to work with them. And also because I had my personal um, transformation with the company where I did lose some of the weight and lost the belly fat particularly and found that that was something super helpful for me. But when you're on these groups, pay attention because I'll also see somebody say, oh, you should try brand X's probiotic and brand Y's shakes. And then they'll put the link for their ordering website and they're not bringing value in it. They're just coming in going, hey, come order from me. So pay attention to that. You know, who is actually valuable? Who's helpful to you? Um, so there's tons of information. One of the other things that I also highly encourage is if there's a local group for you, definitely try to connect with a local group, um, whether it's on Facebook or check on Meetup. The Meetup app can be phenomenal for meeting up with different people, um, no matter what you're life stage is, um, celiac or, you know, things have nothing to do with celiac. It's a great way to meet people. Um, and then, um, finally, there's also the, the gluten-free expos. Do, do a search for those. Look to see where they're coming up in your area. Um, there's like in, I'm in uh, Greensboro area. And so we don't have one particularly in Greensboro this year. However, I went to one in Charlotte last month, March, I'm so confused on my months right now because we're on like the, the, the home stretch of school getting out. Um, so I went to one in Charlotte and then in August, there's going to be a huge one in Raleigh, which to me, I thought the Charlotte one was going to be bigger, but it actually turns out that Raleigh is a bigger market. They actually have more vendors that come to that. Um, so being able to connect with people through that and then also understanding the, you know, the total health and wellness package side of things when it comes to making those changes. So I understand when you're first diagnosed, it's overwhelming. You're hearing people that are frustrated with, you know, oh, which sunscreen do I use? And somebody else is screaming at them, you don't need sunscreen. Figure out where you are, figure out what resources, and just go with a couple. L figure out what, what feels like home to you. And don't completely rely on one source or one group or one blogger. Because if you do, then you're going to be getting just their perspective on things. And you do want to get a mix because of the fact that there are different people in different stages of this. Um, so anyway, tons of resources out there. Definitely do your Google search. Look up also, there's also some controversy, I'll say this, around like the Celiac Foundation website, some of the other ones that have, um, you know, and this comes to, with any big group or affiliation where they're they're paying their bills and maybe are they tied in with some, some organizations that, um, that maybe don't have your best interest at heart. So, um, you know, so, so keep that in mind too, as far as what their underlying um, cause is or their underlying funding for those organizations. Um, University of Chicago actually has a great um, celiac website. They've got great information on there. There are several different celiac specific organizations where you can look. Um, finally, the, uh, what are we going to cover tomorrow? I did ask in the, um, in one of the groups, I asked for what are some of the concerns and some of the issues that and questions that you have. And one of the ones that came up a few times is actually a hot button right now. And it has to do with medicines and over the counter medicines that are safe for people with celiac. So there's legislation being worked on right now. And um, I'll talk about that tomorrow as well as how to find medicines, whether they're over the counter or prescription that are safe for you and what can and can't be done at this point because it's kind of a slippery slope with that. So anyway, I hope that you guys find this helpful. If you have additional questions you would like for me to answer, please comment in the post below or post in the comments below. Um, share this with others that you think that could benefit from this. And um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have an amazing day. All right, we'll talk soon.